All right. So in the last lesson, we looked at how to use HTML lists that were ordered as well as unordered. In this lesson, I want to talk about the image element and how we can incorporate images into our website. So the image tag is again a self-closing tag, so it doesn't need to be closed. But for the image element, just providing an image tag isn't enough. You also need to specify the source, and that's the source of the image that will be displayed. So that can either be a URL, so it can fetch it from the internet, or it can be a local image that's included in the same directory as your website. So we're going to look at both types. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an image of myself online. And let's have a look to see if there's any images that are actually me. Oh, there we go. So I already found one. So this comes from my Twitter. And you can also probably go to your own Twitter or your Facebook and you can right click on the image and simply copy the image address. Now, if I paste it here, you can see the whole URL of where that image is located. And if I hit enter, my browser will fetch that image from that location. So now if I copy this image address or image source and I add it to my website, as a HTML element, so just above my H1, so just above my name here, I want my image to show up. So I'm gonna use the image tag and the source, I'm just going to paste in that URL that I got from earlier on. Now, the next attribute here that comes up automatically is the alt or the alternative text. And this is a case for, say if a browser can't render the image, then it will simply display an alternative text to the user to describe what that image was about. So I'll just put the alt text as Angela profile picture. Now, if you're interested in search engine optimization and getting your website ranking for certain keywords, this is something that Google looks at to try and figure out what your web page is about. So if you're making a web page that's about burrito recipes and you add an alt text that says finished burrito product image one, then it helps Google to index and figure out that maybe your web page is related when somebody is searching for burrito recipes. All right, so let's hit save and let's refresh and check it out. And I've now incorporated my first image onto my personal website. So you can either look around for an image of yourself on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere that would host it. Alternatively, if you can't find any images of yourself on the web, which is probably a good thing, you can also create an account on Photobucket and upload your own picture in order to get a URL. And after you do so, you can simply click on the image and right click to copy the image address and paste it into your source between the quotation marks. It will work exactly the same. There we go. Angela is now a box of biscuits. Great. <laughs> now, when my browser looks through this file to see how it should load it up and display it, when it comes across this image tag, it has to go and ping the servers of Twitter to try and obtain this image. And if it gets permission to download this image, then it will grab that image and display it over here. So currently, my image is hosted on Twitter's servers and my browser has to download it from there in order to display it inside my web page. Now, what if Twitter goes down? What if they die? What if nobody wants to send tweets anymore? Well, then their server is going to be shut down and my image will no longer be available for download and you will instead end up or something that looks a little bit like this. And you might have come across it in the past when you've been loading up websites. It means that the image is no longer available or is no longer hosted at the address that's specified in the source. So in order to remove our reliance on Twitter, we can also put an image 
into our folder HTML personal site and refer to it inside our source. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if I go onto my desktop inside web development, inside the folder HTML personal site, I can drag and drop or paste an image of me into this folder. And now my index HTML and my picture called Angela.png is in the same folder and I can refer to it inside my code. So instead of using a web address as the source of my image, I can simply refer to the file name because they are at the same level. So index and HTML and Angela.png are at the same hierarchical level. They're both inside my site. Now, if I had an images folder and I put my image into there, then I would have to add a path to get there. So it would be something like this. Now, both ways work and you can do it either way you like. And now if you hit save and you go to my site, you'll notice this image changed from square, which is what it got from Twitter, to circular, which is what it got from my local file. Now, in my case, I'd cropped my image to a circle using Photoshop. But if you wanted to create your own circular image, you can use a tool like crop-circle.imageonline.co. And here you'll be able to upload an image and crop the part of the image that you're interested and get it as a circle and be able to download it to use it in your website. And there we go. We've managed to brighten up our homepage by adding an image of ourselves to the top of it using the image tag. And we've started to look at these HTML attributes. And you can see that every single HTML element in the MDN reference also has a section on attributes. And we're really only touching the surface here because there's other attributes that you can add to the image element or most other elements that you decide to use. And we're gonna be looking at these attributes as we come across them for different HTML elements. Now in the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at anchor tags and how we can start adding links into our website and how we can create new pages that can be linked to from our homepage. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.